Now, at least 15 initiates are reported to have died during circumcision in Wasingishu and El Geo Maraquet counties this month. Several others were admitted in various hospitals after being assaulted while in seclusion. And as Gabriel Kudaka reports, elders and health officers have called for a review of these circumcision processes and the places of the rites of passage where they take place. At Bad Forest Sub-County Hospital in the outskirts of Eldoret Town, Frederick Kipkoech bed undergoes medication after complications that resulted while in seclusion. It is said one man punished him as a way of hardening him into a man. Normally we are going to Kimila and the Kalenjin. But the punishment seemed to have been so severe for Frederick, who had other underlying conditions. Father now wants to take action against the offender. Vila lichapua, infection ime muingia, ime julikana za kuwa, the infection ina spread in the kidneys. Nobody's above the law. Area, the area chief, I'm saying, now it's a police case. But even as Frederick continues with his medication, 15 others are reported to have lost their lives in Wasingishu and El Geo Maracuit counties, with more than 50 having been admitted at various health facilities. And in Wasingishu County, a task force has been formed to look into the issue of both circumcision and the possible interventions to make it safer for the initiates. So it is actually sad that we lost uh, actually 10, 10 boys during this circumcision, right? I believe it will cum culminate into coming up with best ways of ensuring that uh, our boys are circumcised in the right way. We will have a policy direction that will inform us in doing uh, the next policy that will guide us into the circumcision rights. These alarming deaths have rattled lawyer and Kalenjin elders who are the custodians of these cultures. Kama ni lazima mtoto apasishwe tuara kitamaduni waze wa Kalenjin, waze wa luya, waze wa kila jamii tuwakikishe tunachagua watu wale ambao wamehitimu kukupitisha na kufanya tuara kwa watoto wetu watoto wetu hawawezi kupoteza maisha kwa sababu ya kutojua mienendo ya kalja kalja yetu ya waluya tunaangalia mtu mwenye anajua mienendo ya tohara in the old days if you lose a young man under seclusion then the elders would be called um, to re-cleanse the place because death um, uh, makes the place unclean. We have seen a lot of bad things in this season, ending de December 2023. Come 2024, the entire nation, the elders will meet, the elders will give the way forward, we will give instructions who is supposed to take care of this young man. And when we standardize that, then things are going to be okay. Lifestyle change is also attributed to some of these complications. Especially watoto ambao tunakuza sasa hii, kizazi cha sasa hivi. Ni watoto ambao labda, katika wazazi tuliwaweka, tuliwa, tuliwaweka katika maisha ambayo si maisha magumu. Wakati tunapu wakaanza wakanza ku, kumbano na maisha ambayo labda wanasema ni maisha ya kitradisionali, ina, inakuwa ngumu kwao. Wakati tapakuwa ngumu kwa utapata watoto wengine hawezi jeleza. Health experts and elders have called upon parents to give full disclosure of their children's health conditions before going into seclusion shrines to avert such incidents. Parents do not tell us uh, or they don't give a report of their children that my child is asthmatic, my child is uh, has a uh, pressure. The task at hand now is how to ensure the culture is passed down to different generations, but in a manner that does not jeopardize the initiate safety. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV.